it off. So I'm here with Devonte Harris. How are you doing, man? Man, I'm go- I'm doing well. Good to hear. Um, can you just tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? Uh, basically, uh, born and raised in Wichita, Kansas. Wichita went to uh, Wichita South. Uh, graduated from Illinois State University. Uh, drafted uh, last year to the uh, Cincinnati Bengals, and, and now I play for the Denver Broncos. Awesome. Um, so, did you you were born and raised in Wichita? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And what high school did you go to? Uh, Wichita South. Okay, very cool. Um, did you always plan on playing football in college, or what was the? No, uh, actually, uh, it, it was honestly never really the goal. Growing up, I always wanted to play basketball around track. Really? I didn't really get into football until uh, later in high school, maybe my uh, sophomore, junior year. Okay, nice. Yeah. Um, what Did you play corner, receiver, or did you play in high school? Uh, in high school, I played corner, uh, receiver, and I played a little bit of running back, but uh, mainly those two positions. Yeah, gotcha. Were you guys very good back then? No, not at all. I, I, was, I, was, I don't remember here in South being very good, but yeah, no, no, not at all. Yeah, no. I gotcha. Um, so tell me about like where you, what part of town you grew up in? Was it yeah. what side of the tracks was it on? That kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so I grew up all all across Wichita. Uh, growing up initially, I grew up on the north side a lot, um, and then. Uh, my mom and my two older brothers, we moved over to the south side of Wichita. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as I got older, uh, things got a little bit more rough, and I was kind of all over the place in Wichita. So I, I've okay. lived I've lived in uh, probably every place that you can think of in Wichita, I'll probably live there. Wow, so, but you went to south the whole time, though? Uh, my freshman year, I went to north. And then, okay. uh, and then my sophomore through senior year, I went to uh, south. Very cool. Okay. Um, so tell me about your family a little bit. Do you have a lot of siblings? Yeah. What's What's your family yeah. like? Uh, so I guess it's, it's, uh, kind of confusing in regards to, uh, someone who doesn't really know me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so initially I grew up with my mom and my two other brothers. Uh, my real dad was never really around, but right. with my real dad, uh, I have a, a younger brother and a younger sister. Okay. Um, but like who I consider uh, to be my parents is technically my cousins. Okay. Um, and with them, I have a little brother and a little sister. Very cool. Awesome. So, yeah. Do you, are you pretty tight with all of them? Yeah, I really close with everybody. That's awesome. Are you are you the oldest? Uh, I am the oldest of like my intermediate family that I live sure. with, like as of now. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So, yeah. Awesome. So when when did you realize that you could make it to like D one or because you played at Illinois State? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Illinois State. When did you uh, realize? Was it like sophomore year when you first got started, or when was that? Yeah. So. Uh, Whenever I first started playing football, like I literally had moved to a new high school, but I went with the purpose of like, hey, I just want to go and and go uh, be a part of this new opportunity. Yeah. And the uh, coach just happened to want me to play football. I was really into basketball and the track, and I just happened to go play. Um, I was fast. I was athletic. Yeah. Um, I didn't know what I was doing, but I had all the tangibles to to be a good player. So I just went out there and tried it. Um, and I didn't really know in regards to like, like hey, I can I can go be a D one player until maybe. Sure. Um, maybe the end of my junior year. Okay, I think I had like like five or six interceptions, and, and I was playing like decently well. Yeah. Um, but back then, my idea of a, a Division One player, I guess, was uh, more prestigious than what I thought I was because I didn't really have like the the idea of what a Division One player was. Yeah, for sure. Was did there me. did did many kids from South go D one? Uh, myself and uh Kyle Wilson. He went to Arkansas State. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, then uh, he played last year for the Chargers. Okay, were you guys yeah. the same class? He was a year younger than me. You're younger. Okay, cool, awesome. So you were kind of the first one then to kind of make it big then from from South. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say make it make it big, but I made it out. You know what I mean? Sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah I feel. Like, I mean, we had a. I went to Andover Central, and so we had a few oh. here and there, but and like Peyton, my brother, and so um, like we had a handful, but yeah, there wasn't a lot of guys coming yeah, out yeah. so uh, uh most of the guys from my uh, my high school m- most of them with the the juco route i think a lot of the coaches pushed the juco route because i don't know if they knew any better or, yeah yeah you mean or had connections to um go in and, and reach out to to bigger schools so as far as recruiting grows uh for me me and my dad kind of handled, handled all of mine and kind of uh, create opportunities for me sure yeah all right, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about that recruiting process. So, did Illinois yeah. State reach out to you, or did you have to, to like actively send out your film to people? What did that look like? Uh, let me let me think about that. Um, <laughs> it was a while back, oh, but okay. So, um, I, I actually uh, competed in a uh, 
like like combine. Yeah, yeah. The, it, it was the uh, east west. I want to say the uh, like like shrine. Uh, shrine bowl. Was, no, 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 no. It the was bowl. the the uh, blue gray shrine. Yeah, 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 yeah I never talking about yeah. Blue gray shrine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, so I did that when I was in high school. I want to say that was um like my junior year of high school yeah and i had like the top 40 time top bench press basically top everything at, yeah uh, like really not just at my position but in general sure and uh there were a bunch of coaches there and, and i guess like my name uh was brought up from that to the illinois state coaches and then the, they brought me up on an unofficial visit nice. and so did west, so did western illinois okay so, were, you, were you sold right away with illinois state or did you kind of weigh so, your options to see what else was out there uh so I went a tour on uh to uh, Western Illinois. I went with my dad. Yeah. And we were like, yeah, this <laughs> this might not be the move. Right. And uh I want to say the following day we uh drove from Western Illinois to Illinois State cuz I want to say it was only uh maybe 2 hour drive. Yeah, it's not that far, yeah. Drive. Yeah. And uh, uh we only went to Illinois State just for one game. We didn't even get to view the campus much or nothing. But just pulling up, it was a complete 360, and we were yeah. like, okay, uh, this might be the play. So then after that, um, I want to say a month later, they brought me up on an official visit, and after my official visit, I was sold. Nice. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, would you say that's – are there is it a struggle to come out of Wichita as kind of a D1 athlete, or would you say – I don't know. Because there's, there's definitely a handful, and like we've had like the yeah. Brown brothers and some of those yeah. guys, but yeah. what would you say about Wichita? Um, I would say um, that – we have a lot of D1 guys, but we don't get a lot of D1 opportunities. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just think um, that the the coaches and the structure of, like, Wichita football isn't um, prepared to, like, push and produce uh, D1 athletes like other states. Yeah. Um, but I think if, if we put together, like, a system that could get the players noticed and, and kind of get them uh, prepared in a better way, I think we could push out more guys. But, like, athletically – Yeah. Um, we match up against, you I mean, almost any other state. Yeah. Uh, but as far as like preparation and like like systems to to get people places, um, we don't have like the the structure that we need in, in regards to getting players out there. Like me, whenever I got to Illinois State, um, like I said before, I was athletic and I could basically uh, athletically compete or out compete anybody uh, that I went against D one. Yeah. But as far as like, like a mental standpoint of understanding football. And like a physical standpoint of like like knowing like techniques and whatnot of sure. how to be a football player, I, I lack those things, and and those are things that kind of hindered me, um, like starting out, and I had to grow uh, from. Um, but those are, I guess, would be the main thing, just kind of like the structure of how our, our football is done, yeah. there and, and I guess lack thereof. Sure. Do you th what do you think could fix that? Do you think it's like some kind of spring ball or like seven on seven league, or uh, what do you think that looks like? Honestly, I think uh, we just have to get more guys like myself or like Elbert Mack or like Cameron Wembley, the guys who yeah, have yeah. played in uh, uh, the NFL. And I guess kind of coming back to coach or kind of just show the way in the process of, of how to get there. Sure. And I think once um, there's one or two schools who have a structure of what a D1 program is, is supposed to run like, mm -hmm. then I think all the other programs will have to follow that structure or they're going to be left behind. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, so I think just one – I mean, one or two uh, schools have, have to set the tone for what the structure is supposed to be like. And then from that point on, that'll be the standard. Sure. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so were you there four or five years? Did you register at Illinois State? or? So uh, I registered at Illinois State. I was there for four and a half years because I graduated mm -hmm. um, in the uh, December uh, semester. Mm -hmm. But like that semester, I only had six credit hours. Like right. I, I, I basically like should have and could have graduated in four, but I wanted to play my last year. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, what was your degree in? Uh, business administration. Cool. Was that something that you really wanted to do, or was there a chance to leave early, or was it always I need to get my no. degree? And no. So, um, like I said before, like I was adopted, like yeah. uh, by my two older cousins. So, mm -hmm. uh, whenever I moved in with him, the idea was completely you need to get your degree, and, and that's the main thing. So before I left to college or anything like that, he he only promised or he only asked for one thing, and that was for me to get my degree. So when I yeah. went to Illinois State. That was my 100% focus. I didn't think about, hey, I want to go to NFL, right. I want to do blah, blah, blah. That wasn't the goal. That wasn't a part of my mindset. My mindset when I got there was to get a degree. Right. That's so, awesome. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so I tell people all the time, they probably think that it's weird, but it's kind of just how I am. But I think I was more excited 
um, walking across the stage graduating than I was when I got drafted. That's that's important though. I mean, yeah. a lot of kids would they just care about football or they're they're going yeah, all exactly. in on I'm going to make it to the league. When realistically, exactly. I mean, you're an anomaly making exactly. it to the league. But that's exactly. cool. Yeah. Um, when did what year did you realize? Was it like your junior year, senior year? When did you realize you could make it pro potentially? Uh, my junior year like the summer going into my senior year of college mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a bunch of agents calling me and like wanting to meet up and i'm like i don't know wh what this is like the first agent that called me i was like all right i think somebody's trying to scam my phone like i don't know what's going on yeah you know I mean? yeah yeah i'm getting so, pranked uh, yeah yeah then i was getting a bunch of emails getting a bunch of random text messages from from agencies and it got to the point to where i think going to the the uh like my senior year i probably had 80 agents reach out to me really that's yeah, nice. yeah. It, that's it crazy. Was a and uh, like at first, like I called my dad. I was like, "Hey, like, uh, there's been agents reaching out to me. I don't know exactly what the process is like, but I, I gave them the, like your phone number. They're gonna reach out to you." And my dad's like, "All right, whatever that means." <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Um, so then you kind of get ready. You graduate at semester, and then yeah. do you just immediately start getting ready for the draft or the combine, or what does that look like? Yes. So, um, my last month at Illinois state, I was, um, I was basically setting up for like where I was going to go, who I was going to sign with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, like I talked to him, like, I like him, I'm going to sign with him. So the day that I graduated, I was like, okay. Or, or like the day that I was done and mm -hmm. I was with an agent, like I was ready for that. You already knew who I, you wanted to go yeah, with. Yeah. And... yeah I, I, Cause I basically had like a, a whole semester to figure out uh, I, cause I couldn't sign until our season was over. Right. So I had a whole semester of trying to figure out uh, who I was going to sign with, where I was going to train at. Yeah. It, it, like it was just a whole bunch of stuff that it was kind of foreign land in me that I just kind of had to figure out over a semester. Right. Yeah. That'd be yeah. hard unless you know somebody that's walked through that yeah. personally, they can kind of help I you mean, out. Like, but... I knew like some people, but I mean, I, I think I knew maybe five people and they all had completely different agents. Yeah. And I all had completely different experiences. So it wasn't set up to where I was like, okay, like this agency is really good or this one is good. Mm -hmm. When you have like 80 options, it's hard for you to be like, okay, this is the one out of those 80. Right. This guy's going to be the guy. And when you don't uh, completely understand like the structure of how agent is and what an agent does for you or you mean what he can't do for you, um, it's really hard to narrow down. So you basically kind of got to go on like a, a leap of faith and, and just figure it out. Uh, but yeah. actually – I changed agents um, like two months after I signed. Really? And a lot of people don't even know that. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. What What was the reason for that? It was It was more so with Phil. Uh, yeah. The, the the agent that I was signed with, um, he was he was a good agent. Like he was really a successful agent. I, I think he was top top ten, top fifteen agents at mm -hmm. the time, um, and and still is. But as far as the relationship goes with me. Mm -hmm. I couldn't really relate to him. He couldn't really, really relate to me. So uh, th there's a trust factor for me um, in, in regards to not being able to relate to him. Right. That just kind of made me skeptical. I mean, yeah, like I'm sure he was a good dude and he was stand-up guy. But as as far as like trusting it with my career, um, it wasn't a position that I, I didn't want to be in because I didn't really uh, understand him very well, if that makes any sense. Right, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. is there any issue then if you were wanting to drop him or was it kind of a mutual deal? You both could break the contract or whatever that looks like. Uh, basically, the, the way that it worked out is uh, he paid for my training. He paid for a bunch of different stuff. And I, and uh, my my new agent that I uh, decided to go with basically took over that debt. And then okay. After, uh, and then after I started playing, then I paid him. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that's something that – I mean, I wouldn't know anything about. So they yeah. basically help. I mean, you come out of college, yeah. assuming you probably don't have much money. You no money been, at all. Yeah, yeah, you haven't really been able to work or anything. So yeah. they just take on the debt of sending you wherever. I don't know. We can talk about that, but where you, yeah. wherever you yeah. go to train and that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So they took on, um, yeah, that like like personal stuff. So say I needed, hey, like I was going on on a trip somewhere and and I need a rental car or like just yeah. like living in general. Like my last. Um, I want to say like three months at uh, ISU, like I needed my rent paid. They'll, they'll, they'll do that. Or oh wow, uh, flights to train and flights back home. Uh, yeah, like whatever, like whatever you need to take care of in that process. They they kind of kind of take on the bill and you just pay them in the back end. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah.
Wow. Um, so where did you go? So you graduate in December, and where where did you head? Did you go to Florida, or where do you go to start training? So um, the first place, I, I kind of want to go visit. I want to go visit the Exos uh, down in, uh, it was in Florida. Um, I'm trying to think of which one it was. Um, I can't think of what it was. That's right. Where it was, but it was like the Exos down in Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I, I was there for about three or four days, and then I went to go train at um apec in forward texas is okay. where i ended up training at yeah like, i was told that it was a really good spot uh, a bunch of players that i had known had trained there and it was a good spot and it wasn't too far from home i want to say it was a it was a four-hour drive yeah that's not bad yeah it's not bad at all from what you're talking exactly so uh it was a really good facility i had a really good feel for it um my best friend from high school had just moved there yeah and so like it was it was close to him as well and also uh, like i said it was close to home so very cool that's awesome yeah. What does that prep look like? Are you trying to get stronger? Or are you pretty much just like, okay, I'm kind of where I need to be, obviously, if I have this much interest, just how can I tweak the technique for the 40 or what does that yeah. look like? It was it was a little bit of everything. So a lot of it for me was, was basically uh, I was doing a lot of recovery from, from college. Could you, mean, could you go from playing like like your last season and then you right. go and you train in? Uh, so you want your body to be in, in tip-top shape as far as like injury-wise. You, you want to you mean, kind of get that fixed. Right. Um, but a lot of the training was completely surrounded around the combine. It sure. was completely surrounded around the combine. So anything like as far as like like strengthening or like explosiveness or like uh, like time and bench press or yeah uh, anything in regards to what you're going to see or do at the combine, it was basically two or three months of just that full structure. Every single day was planned out. Yeah, for you to, uh, basically for you to perform and to um, help yourself be a lot better at the events of the combine. Very cool. So you, yeah, so you basically trained for two and a half, three months for three days. That's nuts. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure, yeah. though. A lot of training exactly. just for yeah, a couple man. days. of. Yeah. Um, and I had a couple of your stats written down of 443 on the 40 and 22 yeah. reps on the bench press. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, I'm assuming, I mean, that obviously really fast and really strong, but is yeah. that was that towards the top for cornerbacks? Uh, for the uh, 40, I want to say it was like top 10 or something like yeah. that. And for uh, bench press, I was number one. That's awesome. That's really yeah. cool. And you ended up going in the fifth round, 151st yep. overall. Was yep. that higher? Or is that where, lower? Was that where you thought you'd be? Where do you? What do you think? Uh, I I wasn't really sure. So whenever I first came out, um, I think there was stuff saying like sixth round. And yeah. And there was stuff saying seventh round. There was stuff saying undrafted. And I heard, okay, man, I think this kid can go in like the the third or the fourth. Yeah. You know I mean, so I, it's all I over heard, the place. Yeah. You. Uh, uh, so I heard like a whole bunch of different evaluations but at the end of the day uh draft day is completely different than what people expect it to be you know what I mean right um, some people get drafted lower some people get drafted higher uh it's like some teams are taking more wide receivers this year some right so, uh, some teams are taking more uh offensive linemen so um your draft grade um really varies based on what the team needs that following season sure and so, do you do you talk to a lot of specific teams or is that your agent's job or anything like do, were the Bengals talking to you before that like hey we're pretty interested or i'll be honest before the draft i think i had talked to um maybe like 27 teams mm-hmm. and the Bengals was not a single team. <laughs> not a single team funny how that works out yeah yeah yeah, yeah. wow um so you mentioned injuries. Did you have many injuries in high school or college, or were you pretty lucky to stay healthy? So in high school, my sophomore year, I broke my ankle. Mm-hmm. Um, my senior year, I, I tore my large and small intestines. Ooh. Uh, so I, I literally only played one game my senior year of high school. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. And uh, and somehow I still got a, a full ride at Illinois State. Uh, that was more so based on track, though. So I ended up. Um, my junior year, like I was top three or something like that in, in all the events, like the 100, 200, four by one, long mm-hmm. jump, uh, like at state. And then my senior year, after I tore my intestines, I came back and, and I ran and I went to state in all my events. Wow. Like, maybe like four months after I tore my intestines or, or or like six months after I tore my intestines. That's insane. Like I went back and, and ran track that year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, and then – I guess we'll, we'll just kind of walk through how things went. So you end up going to Cincinnati. What was yeah. that transition like going from Illinois to Cincinnati? Uh, honestly, I would say 
it was a wake call in, in, in some ways because like the structure was completely different. Yeah. Um, you go from being the best guy on the team to like, I don't know where I fit on the team. Yeah. So like, uh, like as far as that goes, it's completely different. And you go from being like, hey, I'm the number one starter, like I'm the guy on the team, to being like, okay, are you going to be on the team? Are you going to be practice? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. Practice squad, so, special teams. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, it was really me trying to figure out my role, who I was going to be, and how I was going to get it done. So it, it was a it was a huge wake up call for me because when I first got there, um, I, I didn't really know who was the leader on the team. I didn't know like, hey. Follow after him, and this is like this is the process. Like right. this is how you do it. You know I mean so? I didn't really know. Like everybody was kind of different, and I, I didn't know which path that I wanted to follow behind. So I kind of just did my own thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so what does the what does the day to day look like in season? And it might be different from Cincinnati yeah. to Denver, but what does that yeah. kind of look like? Because I know it's like in in college they say it's a full time job, but the yeah. pros is literally a full time job. So yeah, literally a full time job. Yeah, so. My first meeting every day is at 7.50 in the mm-hmm. morning. Um, so I, I usually wake up at about at about 6.35, 6.40. I only live four minutes from the facility. Perfect. Um, so, so, it's, so it's right up the road. Uh, a lot of days I'll get there like 30 minutes early. I uh, go up, talk to coach, um, uh, have a meeting with him, go over any practice film or any game film or really anything that he saw uh, that he wanted to go over. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'll probably uh, get there a little early. Uh, for that, and then I have a meeting, a special teams meeting, w- with the Gunners at seven fifty, and then we basically have meetings until, um, like, I want to say, t- two o'clock, one thirty, mm-hmm. or no, one forty-five, and then uh, we have practice. Practice goes until about, um, I want to say, f- about four, and then we have another meeting after practice. So uh, I, I literally go. I'm in the building from maybe seven twenty-five to about five o'clock. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And then, what does your recovery look like? Are you taking ice baths yeah. after game day, after every day? What does that look like? Yeah. Uh, so a lot of days I'll leave from there, and I'll go. Uh, I'll go to a spot, and I'll either do acupuncture, mm-hmm. uh, I'll get a massage, I'll do cupping. Every day I'll go, and, and, and I'll do something extra every day. Um, and, and I, I mean, it, like it varies based on the day. Sure. Um, now, like I've got to the point to where on, on Thursdays I uh, do an IV. Okay. Every Thursday. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of new for me because uh, in Cincinnati I didn't really have that option. Yeah. Uh, now I do a uh, IV every week to kind of um, uh, get more fluids in my body. There's a, a bunch of vitamins that go in it as well. Yeah, yeah. Like B12 and, and whatnot. So. Sure. Um, so I do that as well. Very cool. That's awesome. Um, what, what kind of preparation I, I had asked some people if I had the chance to interview like you or, um, yeah. some other professional athletes, they were wondering, how do you prepare for games, either calisthenics or mentally? Do you do, practice any visualization or how do you prepare? Uh, like in regards to, uh, probably like, games. Up game. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, uh, every game day I'll, uh, leave because we have to stay in the hotel uh mm-hmm. day before the game so i'll go home i'll eat breakfast i'll shower and i meditate for 20 minutes every yeah. every sunday yeah uh, there's a quick meditation for me and then from meditation uh i get dressed and there's like there's like five songs that i literally listen to on my way to the game every, yeah. every Sunday. yeah what, what are some of those songs um <laughs> uh so i listen to uh a uh, little TJ uh, a song called "Hold On." I listen to the baby. Mm-hmm. Um, on a lot of different mixes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so what was the biggest difference between year one and year two, or what? What was going through your mind, kind of the the switch from the Bengals to the Broncos? What was that process? Yeah. So my first year with the Bengals, I was I was hurt for twelve games because I got hurt the mm-hmm. I want to say the second preseason game. Uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, the Cowboys saw so us out for 12 games of that season. Uh, I came back and I uh, was active for four games and I played in three. Okay. It, it was mainly like special teams role. Right. And it was kind of uh, towards uh, the end of the year we were losing, like not playing well. Yeah. So I was kind of just thrown out there to play and I feel like there's a lot of pressure. Like, yeah. Hey, you mean like you haven't played in 12 weeks to go out there and play? Right. No kidding. You know what I mean? So that was oh, kind yeah. of hard. Uh, but also 
like seeing people get cut every week and like them throwing me out there like, okay, you need to go out there and perform. Yeah. Because you, you just saw a dude get cut the other day. Yeah. Were you worried yeah. about getting cut when you got hurt? Um, yes and no. Yeah. Whenever I first got hurt, I, uh, I was, but then I went and talked to the head coach. He told me what the process was going to be like. Then I talked to my agent. My agent told me, uh, uh, like, what would go on. And, and I kind of just, just knew the structure from that standpoint. Yeah. But every time something new happened, I didn't know the rules. I didn't know the outcome. And I had to go and call my agent. Hey, what does this mean? Sure. What is, you know what that's mean? nice so, to have somebody that kind of has your back there like that and can yeah, help yeah, explain yeah. stuff. Uh, so that's another, like, huge part about having an agent as well is, like, as far as, like, the structure and the rules and, like, what can go on, like, uh, throughout the team and what can't go on. Uh, yeah. You mean, like, this is what happens if you get cut. This is what happens if you go practice squad. Sure. I mean, like, they kind of tell you and, 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 and kind of there for you real wise because that's not something that you get taught going into the NFL. It's not like yeah. there's, like, a booklet of, like, what ifs, and, and, and you can just learn from a booklet. It doesn't work like that. You kind of right. learn. It real. So, yeah. Fair. Uh, so what was that? Was the process like? So you play three of the last four games or so. Yeah. Then yeah. what happens? Then uh, when in off season, I have a full off season. Uh, my off season was a bunch of training and a bunch of my foundation stuff. Um, Is that with the back. team or individually? It was uh, individually, and then you come back. I want to say uh, April, mm -hmm. like uh, very end of April, like right after the draft, or I want to say it was either right after or right before the draft. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, OTAs, mm -hmm. and then uh, after OTAs, uh, they give you a little bit of time off. Then you have training camp, and then uh, like training camp goes on is preseason. And yeah, then preseason. Then like everybody knows. Okay, game four, day after, uh, like day after game four is cuts. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Like basically, you have like four months of like okay, especially me only playing three of the last four games right. out of out of sixteen games, and going in like, okay like. It's almost like me starting off from scratch because I didn't really get a chance to play. I didn't get a really a chance to put much on film. Right. It was basically me starting over my rookie year all over again. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So then you're at, you're at the Bengals still at that point, right? Yeah, yeah. So when when do you make the switch to Denver, and what what was the reasoning, or what happens there? Uh, so it's all throughout uh, training camp. I'm there. Um, I play in the game against the Colts. It's it's preseason game four, and. I mean, at this point, like, I'm on the bubble of DBs. I, I don't know if I'm going to stay. I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. um, I played pretty decent. I, I had a forced fumble. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't know if you saw the play or not. Uh, uh, pretty, I'm not sure if I did. I'll have to look it up, though. Yeah, but I had a pretty good play. It, it, it was a forced fumble in that game. I'm like, okay, that might have sealed the deal. Like, I, yeah. you, I had a bunch of plays that game in, in the final game. Uh, going to evaluations, I called my agent. I'm like, hey, I don't know if I'm going to go, if I'm going to stay. Like, I don't know what's going to happen, but you mean we're going to figure it out. So uh, basically, he tells me, "Hey, if you get a call, then you mean that means that either they want to uh, move you over to practice squad or they're gonna cut you." Yeah. If you don't get a call, then you're good. So I'm sitting there like, "All right, <laughs> just waiting." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you literally wait on the call, and I got a call uh, from one of the scouts, and I'm just laying in bed. I look at my phone, and I saw the name. I'm like, "All right, it's time to go." <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, I, yeah. I, I pick it up. He says. Uh, hey, this is Andrew. I, I just call and let you know. Hey, we're going to put you on waivers. Um, I then I think they said come in at like like ten o'clock or eleven o'clock because uh, we want to try and bring you on on practice squad. And I'm on the phone like, yeah, probably not. <laughs> I'm thinking the whole time. But I go in anyway. I kind of follow the process because I'm not sure. Hey, right? Is our team going to come pick me up on the fifty three or what the process is like. So, so you, you kind of have to, uh, I guess, play the game until you figure out where you're going to end up. Right. Uh, so, so I go in, talk to the coaches, grab all my stuff. Um, they say, uh, hey, like, uh, uh, there's a chance that uh, we can bring you back, practice squad, and you mean throughout the season, we can bring you back and, and bring you back to 53. But the whole time in my head, I'm like, yeah, probably not. You yeah, I mean? yeah. I'm like, if you guys want to be here, then – then you'd have kept me on the fifty three. Right. I mean, so my mind was just kind of like, okay, like I like it's fine that I'm not here, but I'm gonna go somewhere else and I'm gonna make an opportunity out of it. Right. Absolutely. So, like I was kind of done with them after that, just from the standpoint of like, um, like I feel like if they wanted me, then they would have kept me. Right. Um. Basically, w went home, called my agent, like, hey, this what happened? This, uh, this going on? So what's next? My agent's like, hey, um, can't really do much right now. Got to wait it out. I. Got to see if, if, if teams are going to call and you mean what's going to go on. So the next day goes by, and I'm like, every, like, 10 minutes, I'm like, okay, so what's next? 
Right. And, um, and then he's like, hey, I talked to the this team, this team, and that team. And like, mm-hmm. basically, basically told me 15 different teams that he talked to. So I'm like, all right, cool. Um, then I guess it was like four o'clock or something, uh, that day is, is when, uh, is, is when like they could open up for, for trades and a bunch of other stuff is, mm-hmm. is what it would be like and where teams could pick you up. So I basically, uh, like I meditated and I called my dad, talked to my dad and I was like, man, like, honestly, like, I'm not even worried. Like I was, I got to the point to where I was completely content with the outcome. Like I was, I was, I was kind of happy yeah, because uh, I feel like it, it was a chance for me to have a fresh start. Sure. I didn't. I didn't know where I was gonna go. I didn't know what the process was gonna be like. I didn't know if it was gonna get, like be a better situation, worse situation. What what the situation was gonna be. Um, but I kind of had a feeling in, my, in the back of my head, like, I mean, everything happens for a reason. Um, sure. There's always uh, for, for me. There's always been something positive on the other side of adversity. Yep. You mean so I knew that you mean whatever it was it was it was gonna be a better situation than where I was already. So yeah. Cool. And then, so then you got a call from the Broncos then? I, then I got a call from my agent saying, Hey, um, Broncos think they're going to bring you on, on, on their 53. We're not exactly sure yet. Uh, but I'm gonna give you a call and I'm gonna let you know. And then the Broncos call me and say, Hey, nice. I, this is so-and-so from the Broncos. Hey, uh, we want to bring you over and activate you to our 53. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So then uh, my agent called me back again and said, Hey, I talked to the Broncos. I was like, cool. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? so, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, and yeah. what's – has there been a big difference between – I mean, obviously, there's completely different organizations, but have you noticed they're run I mean, a lot differently or – I don't know. I don't know how to word that, but – Yeah, yeah. I don't know exactly what you mean. Like, as far as from, like, like a player relations standpoint, sure. um, I think I'm a lot closer with, with my teammates in the Broncos already. Yeah. My first day – at the Broncos, Von Miller walked up to me to my locker, didn't know me from from Adam, you know what I mean, and walks up, says, and like introduced himself. Um, like, hey, bro, if you ever need anything from me or if you ever need anything, just let me know. That's awesome. Uh, so, you mean, since then I've been to his house and hung out with him outside the facility uh, maybe 10 to 12 times already. Yeah, yeah. So, that's really cool. Yeah, so that's kind of like like different for me and because uh, when I was in Cincinnati, you didn't just have guys walk up to you like as a new guy and be like hey like top dog of the team walk up to you like hey if yeah. you need something to know i got you right so uh, f- for me there's a huge like sigh of relief and like a, a huge comfort level knowing that okay if von can come say what's up to me then everybody right. else might, you mean then yeah, everybody yeah. must be like moving in a similar fashion so yeah for it, sure especially going from one team to another uh f- from a situation like hey i just got waved mm-hmm. like you kind of go in on edge like okay I need to do everything perfect. Right. You know what I mean? So Yeah. It's interesting to see how different the cultures can be. That's crazy. It's it's com- it's a completely different world actually. Yeah. Uh, if, like the the facilities are completely different. They're all updated and new. And, yeah. Uh, the uh training room's completely different. There's a lot more resources from a uh, training room standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um everything structured is completely different. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Is there a um I don't know where I was going with that. Um Never mind. I don't know where I was going with that. Um, so, what is there anything else uh, you want to touch on with football or anything like that? Yeah, uh, basically, I think a big one in, uh, in regards to going to the Broncos is I think mm-hmm. the Broncos genuinely gave me a shot and really gave me a chance to kind of uh, go out and play ball. When I were, uh, I was in, in Cincinnati, I got there. I was asking a bunch of questions. I really didn't know what's going on. I didn't know the structure. So, I, like, I was kind of just. I was kind of just this there, just trying to find my way. Right. And I, uh, the coaches kind of knew that in a way. And mm-hmm. my second year going into Cincinnati, I think they treated me like I was a rookie still. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you mean so they didn't give me as many opportunities as I, as I think I should have gotten. Yeah. Uh, they kind of basically made me compete for a special teams role, and that was it. Like it yeah. wasn't. You, you mean it wasn't anything beyond that for me. Um, but like when I got to to Denver, like I went in with a mindset, okay coming from Cincinnati, okay, special team, special team, special team. So I'm going to go out here. I'm going to fly around. Make You're plays. tearing it up. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I'm going to fly around, yeah. uh, make plays on special teams, and my goal is, is to be a special teams pro bowler. Yeah. Because, you know I mean, like that was my idea. And then uh, Chargers game, um, when a player get, uh, gets hurt, they bring me in, and, and I'm starting like the, the whole like half of the game. Like basically went to the locker room, and coach was like, hey, 
uh, 27 year old. Yeah. Like, I'm what? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. I, I, I go out there and play, uh, play pretty decent. And then, you know, I've been starting ever since in every game. Uh, I've, I've gotten a lot better. Uh, coaches have, have grown in confidence. Um, they've met with me. Uh, they spent a lot of time in, in, in my development. And I think I've developed um, 10 times the amount uh, that I've been in Denver than I was in the year and a half that I was in, in Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It, I mean, it shows you were locking down. I mean, yeah. the Browns aren't the best team, but they got yeah. some of the arguably the, some of the best receivers in the league, and you were yeah, shutting exactly. them down. So exactly, yeah. Um, when yeah. you got picked up by the Broncos, was it is it like a year to year contract at this point until you kind of prove yourself a little more, or uh, week so, to week, year to year? What's that look like? I mean, uh, people send me articles all the time, and uh, I just some I look into, some I don't. I I, I guess they consider me to be a. Uh, exclusive uh like freeze and tender is is what it's called something something along mm-hmm. the lines of that. basically um that they, they brought me in on, on a year con contract but i have three more years uh, on my rookie year mm-hmm. deal. um so technically at the end of this year um if they don't resign me then i'm open for free agency gotcha uh, but if they do I, I don't know. I don't. I don't yeah. know how, how it's all set up. Worry like, about what about you can control. Stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, so basically, like I talked to my agent about it, um, and he kind of explained it to me in the best way that he could. But at the end of the day, I still don't know what it means. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, so I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. So I have a couple yeah. things. Um, just a couple things I've kind of read about you from different articles, and then okay. I want to talk about the Wichita Kid Foundation. Um, so one thing that I meant or I heard, I think it was when you were back in town, probably in the spring, um, Mm. one of the news channels did something, but, um, it was mentioned that you struggled with stuttering growing up. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So growing up, that was probably one of my biggest fears ever, uh, was, was stuttering. That was probably, um, like my, my, my crutch. It was something that I've highly avoided, um, and rarely discussed, um, but I guess when I was in college, my sophomore, junior year, I want to mm-hmm. say, I literally kind of learned and taught myself how to not stutter and to try and uh, speak as clearly as I could. Sure. So like I would literally drive around in my 2005 Nissan Altima <laughs> uh, and do voice recordings, like like voice memos. And, yeah. and I called it, uh, what I called it was talking with God is what it was for me. So I, I cool. literally have it on my phone saved till now, but I would literally just walk around uh, or, or drive around, talk on this voice memo, and I would just say random stuff. I would have random conversations. I would pretend like I was getting interviewed. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, no, it sounds funny. It sounds That's cool. awesome, though. Uh, but it literally helped me find ways how to, I guess, manipulate my stutter into speaking more clearly. Because I knew, um, like, that I wanted to speak in front of people. Yeah. But I, I didn't know in what way. Like, you mean, I didn't know if it was, hey, I'm going to work for uh, like a like a Fortune 500 company. I'm going to sure. play for a football team. I'm going to do whatever whatever it is in every job, every aspect, in some way, shape, or form. You're going to have to uh, communicate with people, whether it's a group of five or a group of 500. You're going yeah. to have to learn how to communicate and, and kind of uh, handle yourself in front of a group of people, whether it's presenting like a business plan or uh, presenting a new structure for something. I don't know. Everything yeah. is, is going to be – revolves around you speaking in front of people absolutely yeah communication is super important and you're i mean you're super well spoken and yeah as your platform gets bigger i mean you're just gonna yeah. keep getting better and better and get a bigger, exactly. bigger platform i mean everyone's gonna exactly. know who Devonte harris is after yeah. too long so yeah, yeah that's cool that's really cool um so you started a foundation called the wichita kid foundation so can you can talk wichita. a little bit about that yeah <laughs> yeah uh so i started at the end of my rookie year but uh, technically, I started the idea of it when I was in college. Mm-hmm. Uh, whenever I first got to Illinois State, I made a Wichita kid hat. It, it said Wichita kid on it, but that was more so from the purpose of me uh, being from Kansas, going to school in Illinois, and everybody yeah. making Dorothy jokes. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? So I basically um, I tried to make something positive out of uh, where I was from mm-hmm. and, and kind of try to make the name for, okay, I'm Wichita, and this is how I'm going to re- represent myself. Sure. And like, like at first, people was like, "Oh, Wichita kid," and like a joking way. And now in the locker room, like they legit call me Wichita. Or That's now, awesome. Wichita kid, or mm-hmm. like, like uh, the defense defense coordinator, they call me Witch Witch, <laughs> <laughs> which is weird. I don't know where I don't know where they got that from. Why not? Yeah, but it went from Wichita kid 
to Wichita to Witch to Witch Witch. So it's just gonna now, keep evolving, yeah. Yeah, so now in the locker room they call me Witch Witch. That's funny. But, uh, yeah, basically so for me, it was me uh representing Wichita outside of Wichita. Yeah. And, and kind of just uh creating a platform where there wasn't one. Yeah. And at first like people made like I said, people like made fun of, made jokes about it. Um and then it turned into a movement. And mm-hmm. That's kind of what, where we are right now. Very cool. So what? So you, I know you. I remember seeing you have like a board of people that are kind of helping yep. out with that. What do yep. they do, and what kind of initiatives are they helping spread anything specific, or what? What are you guys doing? So at first, whenever I first started, I didn't have a board of anything. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't have a like 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 a board at all. I was basically doing everything. Mm-hmm. I was going around and and I was speaking to schools. I was doing. Uh, b- back to school stuff. I was doing basically everything on my own, mm-hmm. and, it, and it, it, I, like like I didn't really do it with a name behind it. It was just Devonte Harris going out doing stuff because that's who he is. Right. And then um, I talked to my dad. I was like, "Hey, I'm thinking about putting together a foundation. I, I've, I've already started like Wichita, Wichita Kids with the hats and whatnot. Uh, people are, are really buying on the idea, so I think I'm gonna do something with it. Uh, so I started the Wichita Kid uh, Foundation and. Uh, I guess in the process of beginning to find a foundation, you have to come up with, with, with board members and you have to have a complete structure. Sure. So from that point, I was like, okay, who, who are the basically the top six people uh, that I trust who are going to do a really good job and who are just as passionate in my idea as me? Yeah. So that's basically how I came with with my my board members who mm-hmm. uh, some, some are friends, some are family, and some are just uh, people who are just. I guess really well known in the city, yeah. who just do a, a really good job at, w- at whatever they do. Sure. Um, so, what was, what was the rest of your question? Well, I, yeah, yeah. So, what kind of <laughs> initiatives or what kind what kind of stuff oh, are you okay. doing? Is like yeah, charity yeah. based? What kind of stuff yeah, yeah, are you yeah. doing? So, uh, I have back to school drive. I have a, a really good relationship with the Wichita Children's Home. Yeah. Um, I, my mom is assistant principal at Truesdale. Okay. Uh, yeah. And and she's been work, working in the school district for. 15 plus years. So um, she basically sets up uh, all my public speaking for all the middle schools. Very cool. And schools, elementaries, because she has a direct connection with them. Yeah. Um, so I don't have to worry about that at all. She does all my scheduling for that. That's awesome. Um, uh, one of my uh, board members does like the uh, YouTube channel that we're putting together. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of them does the website. Um, we have like a graphic designer who like who, who basically created the Wichita Kid uh, logo. Mm-hmm. Um, I have... Um, I guess I have like an assistant um, who I can like, if I'm busy, I can just direct them to, to her. Mm-hmm. And she knocks out all the, all the information. I have someone who handles accounting. Um, I have someone who pushes marketing. I have a little bit of everything basically. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um. So what kind of advice would you have for kids in Wichita that, I mean, either have, doesn't have to be sports related, but a big dream um, or mm-hmm. even just dream of going to college and playing sports or anything like that. What, what kind of advice would you have for them coming out of Wichita? That's a good question. Uh, honestly, I guess I would tell them that everybody's process, everybody's structure, every, everybody handles things and, and does things differently. Um, don't look at my story and think that there's only one way of doing something. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I mean? Because I yeah, think yeah. a lot of people say, okay, well, they went to this high school and they went to this college. Okay, what if I don't do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, everybody who I saw before me, like Cameron Wembley going to Florida State, mm-hmm. um, Albert Matt going to Troy, everybody's process was different. Yep. And, and, and I guess what I would tell them is you have to stay true to your process and you have to understand your vision and what you want to accomplish and you have to stay true to that. Um even when um, there's obstacles that fall in your way that may uh, push you and it may like uh, take you off track, you have to keep on uh, going in the direction that you intended. Um, because there's there's always going to be some type of roadblock. There's always going to be people telling you no. There's always going to be hey, uh, I thought this was an opportunity, but it's not. And you just got to keep on going. You got to find a way to make yourself um, who you set out to be. I love it, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I just have some kind of general questions now. Um, some are kind of random and then some are specifically about Wichita. So yep. um, is there anything that you often recommend to people, like any type of book or podcast or anything like that? Uh, I like Inky Johnson a lot. Yeah. You know that it, oh, yeah. That's cool. Uh, I think he, he he's one of those guys who's relatable to almost anybody. Yeah. Um, 
he has stories and he has a way of, of putting his message out that anybody can relate to. Absolutely. Yeah. I think he actually went and spoke to uh, Missouri State before this season. Did he? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So that's Peyton was telling me about that. That's cool. Um, oh, yeah. oh, Peyton. Peyton, yeah. uh, a quarterback at Missouri yep. State. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. Yep. That's my youngest brother. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You did say that. Yeah. Right, right. Now you're good. Um, do you have a favorite failure in any aspect of your life? Ooh, I like that question. Do you have a favorite failure? Um, I guess I would say, I guess I would say, uh, as of recent, uh, being away from the Bengals. Yeah. Um, and I would say that, uh, f- from the standpoint of, uh, that being an adversity that I needed, you mean like it was yeah. like, an, uh, and a lot of people don't even look at it that way. But I feel like that was that adversity that I needed for me to grow in ways that I wouldn't have grown if I was just staying that stayed there, been stagnant, yeah, and comfortable, been a special teams player, and kind of just been on on the back burner and and not representing myself in the way that I should. Right, and you so, knew you knew you were better. Than, I mean, you could probably could have if you wanted to stick around, be a practice player, and not I could have, not sit yeah. around and wait for a call from the Broncos and just be like, okay, yeah, I'm a practice exactly. player now. But exactly, look at I mean, uh, like it would have been it up now. Um, a lot easier. Uh, being comfortable right. but there's never growth in, 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 in the comfort zone yeah and the adversity yeah. of when one door closes another door opens I mean yeah, yeah that's yeah. awesome um, what is your definition of success mm, I would say everybody's definition of success is, is completely different like mm-hmm. your idea of success could be hey I want to be like a millionaire my idea of success could be like hey like I want to make sure that other people around me are millionaires, right? You know I mean? Or hey, like I like I want to make sure that uh, my uh, community grows and I build an infrastructure that puts people in, in place to to uh, to grow and be successful. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. So I feel like everybody's idea uh, of success is different. I would say my idea of success is uh, making sure that anybody that I interact with learns and grows for, for me in any way, shape, or form. Awesome. I love it. Um, do you have a life motto that you live by or what's some of the best advice you've ever received? When I was in, in high school, uh, my dad would always tell me that the serenity prayer. And I think that's something that, that I've always lived by. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. Yep. That's perfect. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there a habit that you've developed over the past couple of years or I guess while you've been in the NFL that's most improved your life? A habit. Uh, I'm a very, um, I'm, I'm a very structured guy. Like, I always have a process. Like, my process sure. uh, rarely ever changes. Like, I always, like, I'm the type of guy who does the same thing the same way all the time. I can tell. <laughs> waking up at six thirty-five every day, yeah, meditating yeah, 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 for yeah. twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I don't. I uh, kind of go outside of my, my realm a whole lot mm-hmm. I, i'm trying to in, in in ways but um i think i've always been more successful when, when i had a structure behind me so i was yeah. trying to look my structure yeah sure um well just while i mentioned meditation what kind of meditation do you do is it just um i don't know do you do you follow like headspace do you use an app or are you just kind of doing it on your own what does that look like uh so my meditation uh, i guess everybody's meditation is completely yeah, different right um so i actually do yoga and uh, from my yoga i learned how to meditate in my own way Mm -hmm. so what i do is i have this chair in my room and i have this foot massage in my room and i basically go in my room make sure that it's super dark and i play uh i guess my favorite r&b music on low Mm -hmm. and i sit there and i think about nothing for 20 minutes that's awesome cool yes yeah um so I just have a few questions about Wichita. So, w- what is your favorite part of Wichita, or are there any hidden gems in Wichita that you enjoy? My favorite part about Wichita, I eat at a lot of places in Wichita. Yeah. Uh, dude, I dine there. Yep. Um, the Cajun Shack. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I used to live right behind it. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's yeah good. when I go to Wichita, I, I go to the Cajun Shack. If I'm there for a week, I'll go to the Cajun Shack four days out that week. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, really, 
If it was Hidden Gems wise, I'll probably name 19 food spots. Yeah. But yeah. Cool. I'm That's cool. awesome. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think Wichita is a great food city. We have a lot of different yeah. kinds of stuff and it's, exactly. it's good quality. So, yeah. Um, is there anything you wish Wichita had that it doesn't? Or how would you improve Wichita if you could? I, I got a lot to say in regards to that because I just think we, uh, there's a whole lot of growth that needs to happen. Mm hmm. Um, but I think the biggest and most important thing that we need to change uh, over the next decade or whatever is uh, the infrastructure of our downtown area. Mm -hmm. I think um, once we put that together and uh, and, and we change that and, and we kind of build around it mm -hmm. or like, like like build into it, then I think the rest, the rest of what y'all will grow. But I think as of now, most of what they do is they uh they build out but they don't build in yeah so wichita is growing outwardly but it's not it's not growing structurally from yep. like the core of wichita yeah so once we like put together like if like like the casino that is in um what's where's the mulvane or wherever it's mulvane. At. yeah mulvane. you mean if that was downtown wichita that would bring foot, foot traffic in which would bring businesses in sure companies in and, and, and companies you mean coming in um would would change a whole lot in the wichita area so right. that that would be like my biggest thing that, that we need to fix our downtown area sure definitely and it's yeah. slowly getting there i mean we got a new baseball stadium yeah. coming and they're yeah. trying to figure out what to do with century two and yeah. whether it's here uh, or yeah. what so actually like if you're from wichita and you actually like walk around like like the downtown area we have a lot of really uh unique things that a lot of people may may not be aware yeah. of mm -hmm. um and and it's actually like a real cool structure a real cool setup um like the uh delano district yeah it's, it's really it's cool a really cool area but i think we need to think bigger yeah i agree yeah, so. yeah that's a good way to put it yeah um what does wichita mean to you I, you got all the good questions <laughs> i i try yeah 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 uh a lot, a lot of good questions. Which, which tall, um, for me, that's kind of big, uh, because when I think of the other word, which tall, it, it takes me in a lot of different directions. Um, it takes me from, I mean, where I started, where I am right now, where I want to go, and um, all the things in between. Mm -hmm. I mean, so um, that's a really broad question, and I really wouldn't. I uh, really wouldn't know how to answer it, but I will say uh, that I don't know anyone who would represent Wichita um, as big as I do and as much as I do and uh, would have love for the city in the way that I do. Yeah. So. Do you think you'll end up back in Wichita when you're done playing Yeah. yeah. 20 years down the road? I plan on coming back to Wichita and do a lot. Awesome. Good. That's my, awesome to hear. My uh, – end goal is to be a part of the board that that structures wichita mm -hmm. and, and i kind of want to be the guy that, that helps go in and, and make a lot of the, the moves towards the growth of wichita awesome dude i love that yeah excited to have you come back um do you have any final comments or calls to action for wichita or whoever might listen to this uh no nah. <laughs> 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 i think you kind of put your big dream out there and i think people can grab onto that so yeah yeah exactly. um where can people find you on social media uh they can find me at the 24 elite on uh twitter and instagram okay are you pretty active you're pretty active on both of those so yeah yeah cool. uh, really active actually awesome man um well i really appreciate it um i'll link up some of the stuff we talked about and good luck this season we'll definitely be following you all right cool appreciate it man. Day, appreciate it man yeah. Yeah. have a good one bye